Lord joining us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I've waited till last to talk about this food. Uh, we really, that's why we kind of got behind schedule a little bit. We went down there and we saw this banquet, or I don't mean how to describe it, but and there was a, a, an immense amount of uh, food there, so uh, we appreciate that, certainly. Uh, we may not eat for a day or two, but we certainly appreciate that and all the hospitality. And, uh, Talk about some things. Before I go any further, let me uh, introduce those that are with us tonight. Some of most of you know, most of us probably, but just in case you don't, let me do that. But I'm going to start down at this far end to my right. That's Larry Wilkerson. He's one of our board members. Coming this direction is <coughs> Fred Curry. He's the vice president of the board. Beside of me here to my right is Jeff Midkiff. Uh, he's a superintendent of schools and a Kyan Valley graduate. Sit right in. To my left is Rowdy Baker, who is a board member, and he's also a Kyan Valley graduate. And then down there at the end is Carol Smith, a board member, and Kyan Valley graduate. So, you know, we're, we're outnumbered. My name is Steve Priestley. I'm the president of the board. <coughs> now, uh, over there at a table uh, by themselves are the outcasts. <laughs> They're with us too here tonight. Uh, we have uh, Susie McCann. She's Mr. Midkiff's executive secretary. And beside of her is Kirk King. He's the assistant superintendent of schools. I, I didn't miss anybody. Did okay. All right. So let me, just a couple of things. Now, first of all, we're going to approve the minutes of our last meeting of October the 8th, 2019. Can I have a motion? So moved. All right. It's October 29th. Mr. Wilkinson made a motion. Second by Mr. Baker. Is that an all yes vote? Yes. yes. Okay. Procedurally wise, let me just share something with you here. <coughs> we have an agenda that goes out to the public three business days before our board meeting. So typically they go out on a Thursday because we have Thursday, Friday, and then Monday because the day of the board meeting, Tuesdays don't count. So by law, we have to do that. So anytime that you want to see what is going to be on a board agenda, what we're going to be talking about on a given board meeting, you can always go online or somehow access our agendas and see what's going to be talked about or what we're going to be dealing with at those board meetings. So this particular agenda went out last Thursday. Now, and these are really, uh, it's part of the open meetings law, but the things that we are uh, advising the public we're going to talk about. So that way if somebody has a, something of interest that's on there, they know that and they can come and attend and, you know, might have there's something they want to comment about. But in addition to that, people can come to a board meeting on the night of the meeting and sign in to speak to the board. And that's what we call it the pink sheet for obvious reasons, it's pink. And if a person wanted to speak to us, 
they could sign in before the board meeting had started and address the board with something that they had on their mind. Now, we can't really go have a discussion with you or answer questions or anything, but we certainly listen to whatever is said to us. The reason we can't do that is because the open meetings law again. Uh, whatever happens at these meetings, the public needs to know we're going to have a discussion about them. So if somebody signs in and they start talking about something that you know might be important to them and they have a certain viewpoint about it, well, somebody else might have a different viewpoint and they don't know you're going to be talking about it that night. So that anyway, so anytime at any of our board meetings that you would like to come and address the board, you may do so by just coming before the meeting and signing this sheet. And as you can see, no one has signed in tonight. But uh, that's kind of the way that operates. Now, um, uh, that would be the public comments. We're down to there, and we don't have any. So now we're down to the presentations and reports. And we're going to have three local school improvement council presentations tonight. Now, uh, all schools in West Virginia must have local school improvement council. We call them LSICs, and I'm sure that's what they call them. Uh, but every school in West Virginia must have one, and it's comprised of faculty, parents, community people. It's all laid out in law who the people that have to be on that. And uh, annually, once a year, the Board of Education must meet with every local school improvement council, every LSIC in the county, the board must meet with them. So tonight, we're going to uh, conduct three of those. So oftentimes, what we do in the Guy Valley area here is we kind of combine those uh, that are in this area, and we do them on the same night. Uh, other places that where a school might, like Hearts, for instance, it's up kind of by itself, so we'll go there and just do Hearts at Hearts. But oftentimes, what we do here is we combine those. Sometimes we'll get a ranger by itself, but uh, Mr. Meekiff uh, has decided that tonight we're going to do all three of them tonight. So what we do with these, we, we allow the uh, School Improvement Council to advise us of things that are going on at their school, and then also gives us the opportunity to ask them some questions. So we're going to move into that phase now, and uh, Mr. Hoover, uh, West Hamlin Elementary is first, so you're on to your first. Mr. Hoover. Oh, yes. Help. Hello and welcome to West Hamlin Elementary's LSIC presentation. I'm Kara. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Rollin. And I'm Colin. We are proud to represent all students at West Hamlin Elementary as some of the fourth and fifth grade leaders in, of all classes. We would like to thank the Board of Education members for listening to our presentation tonight. We would also like to thank them for all the support for the year. Thank you to Rainbow Elementary for your support and the Guyon Valley Middle School for being such a nice host to us tonight. We look forward to going to school here soon. Last but not least, thank you to our community members for always supporting us and being part of our West Hamlin family. We hope you enjoy our presentation. At our school, we have the Leader Attendance Program. This program is simple. Every time a class has perfect attendance and no one has started, we get a letter from the word leader to put on our classroom board. Once we fill up the word leader, our class earns a prize. Then we start over and try again for the next prize. The leader program is fun because me and my classmates and I are competitive. We want to win the prize. We are happy when, we, when other classes win because it's good for other friends to win, and we're kind of like family. But we want to win the prize, too. The leader program has changed our classes because we hardly have parties now. We strive for knowledge and we love to learn. We have earned the prize once and we are working on our second prize. The leader program is fun, but we think there are other reasons to attend this type of group too. Coming to school is fun. You get to learn and make friends. It's a lot of fun at our school, but it's a lot of work. Some kids don't get to do the things we do or we learn what we learn. They don't have teachers that care. We don't want to waste there are so many good things happening to improve student achievements at our school at the next day. Each nine weeks, some students receive achievements in medals for their hard work. We all set goals for the next nine weeks, and we try to reach those goals every day. This year, fourth and fifth graders are switching classes, and we have an awesome co-teacher in math classes. 
Our asphalt and provisioners help our younger classmates and grades kindergarten through third grade become better readers every day. Over the summer, we got a new Luxile library. We have fun events there like the Spooky Library Story Time, and we will be having a fifth grade literature fair with books we checked out from our new library. In fourth grade, we have Friend Friday. The fourth graders go to younger grades and help them read. We also go to related arts to help them with mental and physical skills. We learn a lot from each other too. We also have accountability partners. We check in with each other every day to help keep each other on track, make sure we did our homework, or to see if we need help, and check out our goals. Every third grade in our school is a safety school at West Hamlin. We all have a special job that helps keep every kid safe. Some of us keep the bathrooms and hallways safe. Some of us help when students get on and off the buses or get picked up and dropped off. We like being role models for the younger kids. This year we have a new way of loading buses because the halls were too crowded last year. We have color-coded bus lines that patrol used to load young kids on the buses. These patrols pick up their assigned bus students and walk them to, the, to their buses safely at each day. It is much safer for everyone. We have lots of safety programs at our school. We have Red Ribbon Week and Kindness Week. The, the fire department taught our students about fire safety, and our bus drivers taught us about bus safety. We even have a stress department during the K-9 unit. We feel very safe in our buildings. All rooms are marked with emergency exits, and our halls are color, have color names, so we know where to be at any time. There are some cameras, but we feel like we need more cameras around the playground. Finally, our teachers make us feel safe. They have been trained and they protect us. I feel like I could talk to any of my teachers for personal issues. There isn't a teacher in the building I couldn't go for if I really need to talk. As you can see, there are, many, there are many wonderful things happening at West Hamlin Elementary. It's a fantastic place to learn. We hope you enjoyed our part of the presentation. We invite you to take a few minutes to watch this video of our classmates and some of the amazing things happening at our fantastic school. Thank, Thank you. you.
Bible Reading Club. We talk about seven habits and uh, we play fun games. shared um, the school's data with you, uh, but um, again, we wanted to go over the data as far as our uh, general summative assessment. Uh, also has our attendance and our our discipline on there. Um, you know, as as you know, last year was a transition year for West Hamlin. Um, Ms. Shortridge, she, she began on the day that the state was walking through with the comprehensive schools followed by Grandparents Day and Thanksgiving break and, and I came in the first of December so I always tell people that I started between Thanksgiving and Christmas so it was a while before I saw what a normal day is supposed to look like so uh, but last year was a transition year when uh, Ms. Shortridge and I came in and you know when you, you come in mid-year you're kind of playing with somebody else's game plan and somebody else's players and and things so some of the things that uh, she and I discussed that we wanted to look at immediately was uh, working with student attendance as well as the climate and culture of our school uh, and I believe that we're we're on the right track um, but with our general summative assessment our ELA came, came down uh, 0.9 percent the math came down 2.1 their attendance came down one um, but as far as the new data this year, uh, this attendance piece right here, as of right now, uh, we are 76% uh, on our attendance with 90% uh, or higher. So actually our attendance right now is up 11% from last year as far as looking at our chronically absent students. Um, but like some of the kids talked about, some of the things that we are doing to focus on achievement is we departmentalized our fourth and fifth grade. We have our strongest ELA people teaching ELA to all, all the grade. We have our strongest math people teaching our math to the entire fourth and fifth grade. Uh, we're able to utilize a math co-teacher as, you know, math scores all over the, the state and the nation are low. And, you know, math is near and dear to my heart as I know it is Mr. Midkiff, so I kind of take it personal with the math as is one of the initiatives that we want to start really, really focusing on and addressing. And uh, I really believe that our, our student achievement, as well as the attendance, when we give you this presentation next year, that it will be a much better picture. Uh, you know, our students work hard every day, our teachers, you know, they, they teach their guts out every day. They're <coughs> right. There's nobody in that building that that's taking a day off and there's nobody in that building that's not loving kids and doing the best and everything that we can for kids. Um, so again, I'm looking forward to this presentation next year. Um, I expect there to be a lot better numbers and some different colors up there. Just clarification back on that again. Up in, the, in that right hand corner. Yes sir. Now, what does, do those numbers reflect again? Uh, 
here is the 2018 the ELA. Corn, right? Yeah. Is that a decrease from the previous yes. year? It's a it's a negative 0.9. Okay. We went from 47.4 to 46.5 in ELA, and 45.6 to 43.5 in May. Okay, I thought so. I just that's to that's sure. the uh, the adjustments from 18 to 19. Next year, you want it to be a different color. Right? Yes, okay. we expect them to be a different color. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Christmas list early. Um, before we go over the facility things that we're asking for or needs, um, we are thankful for the new room in the library. It has enabled us to get all of our students back inside the building so that they are safer and it's just a better environment. The um, annexes are scheduled to be removed soon, so it will also clean up our facility. Um, you know, we've had several needs met throughout the year but these are extras that we are asking for if possible the first one would be the um where we recently changed the locks a key card access um it would be four points and there should be a map in the folder with check marks we would need four additional accesses um, so that if teachers are out for a fire drill or various reasons they can swipe their card at any entrance the check marks on the map is, are the current key swipe places we do have. The circles is where we are wanting to try to get additional ones, um, additional ones made. Now the entrance near um, the pre-K hallway, which would be near this entrance, which is building 12, that's where we're <coughs> in the works of maybe rerouting next year our drop-off procedures. And so that would be where the students would enter in the mornings. So that access would be important for teachers. But um, the, the other hallway that circled, we were hoping for the push button, so the intercom system there, because what happens is, is the students have to run in from the playground to use the restroom or are picked up that right now there's not really a procedure. The teacher has to escort them, link students, and use their car to let them in the building. Or we have to usually send somebody out to the building to get them. So that would help with logistics where the student could push the button, the secretary could see them and post them in from the playground. The second thing that we're asking is if this is our picnic shelter. Um, currently, there is no lighting or camera use. So that's a blind spot when we go to full footage. Um, you can see beyond it and you can see before it but for some reason that is a complete blind spot and that's where um, our students are wanting to start the anti-bullying club that was the first suggestion but we had to move it because we can't monitor them there um, so we're asking for additional cameras and additional lighting being the back of the school um, the third thing is um, we were hoping for a even a carport or some kind of awning um, where this would be our courtyard so there's kindergarten classrooms on each side um, the reason is for several things um, one would be that when we have special events in the gym those <coughs> students wouldn't lose that related arts time so we wouldn't take over Miss Pritchard's gym we um, could set up a Minds in Motion is a new initiative from the State Department we could set up a Minds in Motion obstacle course for those students there um, so that they can run through it whether it's with their teacher or with Ms. Pritchard and then also if it's a nice day and we need the gym she has another location that the students could still be active in so um, the thing we thought would maybe be the most feasible would be like <coughs> half of it covered with either a metal carport or some kind of awning just to keep the students covered Um, the one of the final things is um, a gate access where it would slide and you put the next one it's a better view um, if you notice in the first one the students have to cross the road to go to the playground right now so if it's if a car comes off of the dairy road onto um, our side road it can be a hazard you know if they just run and not look so um, if if you look at the guardrail, our thoughts were to attach it to the guardrail where it slides either way. 
<clears throat> and then the final thing was we were hoping to update our signs. We still are one of the only schools in the county that have the good old marquee, although I know some people like them, um, but we thought we would ask for a, a new electronic update. Our volunteers will probably appreciate it too. <laughs> They're out there rain, sleet, or snow. And we just want to say thank you. Anybody have any particular questions about anything that was mentioned here this evening? It's similar to the one that's on the lower end of Midway, their exit gate. It would, it would be an automatic gate and it's motion activated, but you could not come in from the dairy road. This would be an exit only coming from around the school. But they can still get out. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it would be motion and activated like the Midway gate. And then during school time, we already have the one gate there that walks. You have to manually lock it. So if we wanted to even walk that during school time for the playground, that's an option. But with the rerouting of drop-offs in the morning of pickups, we're talking about possibly rerouting because we're having some safety issues in the evenings there and where people are still on the road. That would help with getting them off the main road, but also help with cars cutting buses off and things like that. Then they couldn't pull down. So they could only get out, so that it would be a one way essentially. Is it so. not what is it not one way now? No. And we've talked about that issue that probably every year that we have the LSI sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think you're on the right track and hopefully uh, you'll know, continue to do many of the things you're doing now and next year we'll be able to help the different colors. And we there have we seen a tremendous improvement in tardies and attendance this year. Right. I know we can't really report that yet, but um, when we first came, the tardy sheet was sometimes eight pages and we're now at three or four names. And it's even that the kids are in the hallway yelling, go, come, go on, go on, go on, because they get that letter if they're not tardy. So it's proactive, hopefully. Well, you have some unique ideas, and that's <coughs> what you have to do sometimes to see what works. Good start. And the students do great. Yeah, they do. Probably remember day, but yeah, they've done fantastic. Thank y'all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I was going to ask one thing. Your enrollment, is, uh, did your enrollment yeah, like, it drop right. pretty significantly. We're about 460. And, you know, typically West Hamlin's anywhere from 520 to 540. So we had a very large eighth grade or eighth grade, fifth grade class that moved on to the middle school and a, a little smaller uh, pre-K, but that only accounted for about 20 kids. But we had a lot of transfers um, out of county, a few in county. So it did significantly decline. It was probably about what, about a 60, 60 kid drop, 65. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I about that. Okay. <coughs> we'll let them uh, get gather their things there and then we'll let this announce. But they were then. They're not going to dance. Now. No, no song things today. <laughs> I don't have the energy to do a song well, today. <laughs> Been on a tour and we ate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no dance. <laughs> Do they? No, I didn't bring one. I thought that was that, that was your set. I'm sorry. Really, I don't have to have that. I've got a. Oh, I've got paper coffee. Are you sure? Can I can set brandies up. No, I've got paper coffee. It's not easy. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not contagious. No, I have. Oh, I was tested. I'm not contagious. Thank you all, parents, for coming to come out. there, the baseline that we started at for ELA and the baseline for math, and it shows each year what our target is for us to continue the, the growth that we're seeing. Last year, 69% of our, fifth, our current fifth graders, which were fourth graders last year, 69% uh, of them increased their score in ELA from the 17-18 to the 18-19 on the uh, general summative assessment. And 85% of those students increased in math, which was major. And I count that for a lot of where we've departmentalized and Mr. Atkins is doing fourth and fifth grade math. And he knows where those students are when he gets them in fourth grade. This was his students he had had and they had made that much growth because he knows where they're at when they end the year and he picks right up and continues on as well as the same thing in the ELA. Ms. Kelsey knows where they're at and she can continue that and make the growth. Uh, I have our 2018-19 uh, scores. I'm like Mr. Hoover. We're looking for a different color this year. So, but I mean, we're, we're making growth. It's small but it's on a progressive movement. I mean, we're continuing every year to see the growth and that's what matters. As long as they st our students are making positive increases and everybody's doing something else. <coughs> Why did you drop off between fourth and fifth grade and the summer of the assessment? And we'll looking at the, the fourth and fifth grade in math, for last year, 23% of the fourth grade, 6% of the fifth grade. And, and that was a shock, and I had no idea. I mean, we have looked at the numbers, we've looked at the data, we've looked at the SMI, I mean, the MI data, we've looked at the uh, summative assessment, we have even looked at the, through the year when they do their benchmarks, and it just. How had that class done as fourth, as fourth grade? If you don't have that data. I don't have that with me. Or if you maybe uh, in math. The fifth grade that left us last year. Mm -hmm. How did they do the previous year? Well, we don't have access to that data. They take it off once we send our kids to middle school. No, but the year before, we did have it. I got it at school. Well, I, but I don't think that it was as, I don't think it was really that high. Mm -hmm. So but I don't fifth think. Graders, your, your fifth graders this year are the ones that are in their <coughs> second year of, right. of, of Mr. They were, they're the 23% ones. And you expect that number next year to be probably 29 or better? At least. Given the yes. consecutive of the, 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 the of increments of growth, yeah. Definitely. Or prayers anyway. Okay. <laughs> but we're working really hard. I mean, some of the things that we're doing, I mean, we, we've analyzed the data and went through. We had the Summer Academy really targeted every skill, looked at where the kids were, what kids had mastered, what kids had not. So when we started the school year this year, 
we knew we had to do something. So we took a 30 minute, the first 30 minutes, as soon as kids leave the cafeteria from breakfast, the first 30 minutes is in a skill block. We have divided those kids up into what skills they're weak in, and we have targeted, I've got the resiliency coach doing a tutoring group, we've got the interventionist, we've got Miss Mandy, every aide in our building, doesn't matter what you normally do, at that particular time, it's targeting skills. Now when you say that, are you talking about a specific subject area or just where they may be? Fourth and fifth grade right now, math is their target. Four days a week, they have 30 minutes of skill block just in math skills. But the other grades may be doing something. The ELA, we've got two days of ELA, two days of math. And then on the fifth day, we do we do leader in the <coughs> activities on, during that 30 minutes. But we, I mean, we are really trying to get to the bottom of everybody's weaknesses and pull them up. We're even doing it in our K-1-2. We've got some kindergarten students that are not proficient in, I mean, some first grade students that are not proficient in kindergarten skills, so they're going back during that time with Miss Jessica. We've got some kindergarten students that are bypassing those kindergarten skills that they need. They're going up to Miss Bev during that block. So it's it's a cross cross grade level uh, basic skills block. Purely Just, need based. Yes, absolutely, purely need based. And that's the big, big target this year. We've got kids being pulled out with our interventionists all day long, or if it's not, the, the need is for her to co teach, she goes into that classroom. So we're looking at per grade level, per, per need. We've got homework help every morning during breakfast time. Miss Fry is in the computer lab, set up, ready to go for anybody that didn't get homework the night before. She's right there to, to assist in anything they've got. <coughs> we, and we have several kids that take advantage of that. So we've got that going on. We've got our social worker making home visits regarding attendance. She's had several home visits already this year with uh, regard to some of our students that are having some major attendance issues. So we're doing everything we know. We have, uh, and I know this is on the next page, we have, um, and I'm not sure, I'm sure some of you have probably met her, but it is uh, Major Stacy Brown. And she's working with the West Virginia National Guard Drug Demand Reduction Coordinator. And it's through the National Guard in Charleston, but she works directly with the governors. Uh, I mean, the governor in this project that she's got going on. And she stopped in one day just by chance. And she has already started doing various things with our kids on building self-esteem, on character education, on um, just life skills. Just she's sharing the obstacles and the challenges that she had and making those connections with some of our kids. And then she's, she is adamant about coming back and doing lots of activities with our, with our children. So that's a great connection for some of them. And that's an opportunity if they see that uh, the National Guard or the military is a possibility for a career for them, that's going to help tremendously when they get to middle school and high school to know that they have something and she has the impact to, to bring that to them. But we also have Marshall Behavioral Health coming in this year as well, working with our social worker and our counselor on their bringing uh, their services into our school. We went out and got parents' signatures, permission and everything. They're meeting with some of our kids that need, that have some behavioral issues, that have some, that need some counseling that parents are not able to provide the transportation to. They're coming into the school and doing it. So that's, a, that's having a, a real positive impact right now. Basically, the cameras and the safety drills and stuff, we continue that every year. So that's nothing new that you guys are, are going to hear. It's We continue to hone in on those things. The fire marshal came at the end of last year and gave us some, just sort of piqued our interest on some things that we need to 
be thinking about like if there was a a uh, major catastrophe or something and a meeting place for our parents rather than because he said there's no way they're going to get across that bridge so we need to have something set up well now that Brenda's left us and bless her heart I am thrilled to death for her but even today the comment was made we have nowhere to go get anything if we need I mean a loaf of bread or or chicken salad which was our big thing we have nowhere to go get anything so, you know, when you come to school at Ranger, you better bring what you want because you're not going to anywhere to get it. But the church next, across the river there, uh, Mr. Vance's church, we're making connections with him. When we had our trunk or treat, that church, a lot of their members came and provided uh, treats for the kids within our school. So we're making that connection to have that as a resource for parents if something major were to happen that they could at least meet us, meet uh, their children there once we, once everything's cleared up and we can uh, get them out to them. But we're just trying to think ahead of things that, to be prepared just in case something major would, would ever happen. Uh, we're still doing our backpack program. All those things are still in place. Uh, using our parent uh, community coordinator to make a lot of parent contacts, I mean parent contacts. We've got a lot of parent meetings scheduled, educational meetings for our parents. Uh, back in all, uh, August we had the math night and it was an educational opportunity for parents to come out and work with their children in their classroom in math activities. So that gave the parents an experience on, and it gave them the opportunity to ask questions on some of the math that their children's bringing home. So that was that was different, but it was it was a good experience and we had a big turnout. And we've got a reading night set up to, to do the same thing, to just share some of the strategies and things that parents can do at home. Well, that's one you hear about all the time, you know, the parents of math are doing it differently than we oh, do yeah. and, and how you do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you know Mr. Garfield or Mr. Adkins, He's as country and as down to earth as anybody can get. But he communicates so well with our parents. He really is able to, I mean, they just love him. And he's big and burly and just loud, but he just has that connection. And the parents love him. The kids, I thought when he first started, I thought, oh my God, these kids are gonna be scared to death of him. because. He is so loud. But I'm t even preschool, they can tell you, the preschool run up and grab him by the leg. And it it works. It just works. So it, it's a good experience. The only thing that we had talked about, and I talked to Mr. Mickip and I've talked to Mr. Gosney, our only need is storage. We have one small storage building that they repaired the roof on, and we have that. The building that they did all the major work on still leaks like it's just got water running through it. And there's no way we can do away with that building because it is in that wall of that, where the road is, it's into that mountainside. So there's no way of doing anything to is fix where, it. Is that where the water's coming from? Mm -hmm. And there's, it's, I mean, they have done an outstanding job of putting new roof on it. They put uh, gutters on it. They have put they have put drain pipe, drains and everything. The water, I mean, sealed the inside with the stuff that's supposed to stop it. It's still running with water. So the only thing, and I've talked to Mr. Gosney, and he had uh, talked about a storage unit that's something like a trailer that's on a semi or something like that. But that's the, I mean, other than that, we're, we're doing really good for the facility that we have. We're, it, it's holding up very well. That, that, the only thing is, and the preschool has a storage building, and it's a huge storage building, but preschool has lots and lots of stuff, and they have to pull their stuff out, put it in their room from <coughs> one month to the next, so they just don't have any room to stay. They need a lot of things. Yes, they do. Did you lose any students? We're at 105. 
So we're holding steady. I mean, one week we'll gain one and the next week we'll lose one. But I can remember the days when we had 145. Yeah. But it's compared to last year, it's about the same. It's about the same, yeah. It may be one or two different. But yeah, we're pretty holding pretty tight. Anybody have any other questions? <coughs> How many students are you serving on a back pack program? I think there is about 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of those we double the backpacks up. Some of them have younger siblings at home, so we make sure that they have That's good. Yeah, double double sure. backpacks. There's some of them that the bus driver has to put put it up front and then they mm -hmm. help them get it off. So little things. Sure. All right, well, we sure appreciate it. Keep up the good work. And, uh, We're striving. Uh, if you need anything, contact Mr. Mickey. Mr. Gosney has a plan, too, for your story. I talked to him this morning. So, yeah. so he's, yeah. Mr. Gosney's on it. I mean, that was hard. He, he works <coughs> hard. He really does. No. And he's very organized, I have to say. He's... Uh, he has to be. Yes, he does. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll sit back there. Did you? Did you back there? Yeah, you see that? I do like meeting here. I do too. That was my leadership team. <laughs> Every who it was, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Most of them are back there. <laughs> Good job. Hey, I was super impressed when I sat down and saw the cat a, I mean, a plastic bound copy of the presentation today, and then I looked and saw it was actually a desk plan. It's not very impressive, but. Okay, now we have uh, Guy and Valley's going to have their LSIC presentation. Mrs. Davis is going to conduct that partly in the way. After she gets started, we'll leave it up to her. I think one of our guides is going to do something. Can we put that up there and then I'll pull it down and do the video? Are we going to do that? We now have a game room here at Guyne Valley. 
Over the summer, a group of students synergized and came together and volunteered their time in order to help paint the game room and the bathrooms. Oh, I just lost where I was. <laughs> All the games in the game room were donated to sharpen our soul. Students are allowed in the game room during their lunch. After they have eaten, they can play games such as pool, foosball, air hockey, basketball, skateball, and car games, or just hang out with their friends. Eventually, students will use their cat bugs to enjoy the game room. Currently, it is free for us to enjoy. The next door, we have our new lunch detention room. Originally, it was full of old furniture, books, dust, dirt, broken pieces of furniture, and cobwebs. Our student volunteers came in and cleaned all of it out. Lincoln County Day Report came back this summer, too, and helped paint the hallways, doing touch-ups, along with helping Ms. Fer Ms. paint Ms. Ferguson's room. Other student volunteers came in and created the bulletin boards as a spin-off from Avengers Endgame and Leader in these began with the end of mind. Our superhero theme revolves around the phrase, GB keeps the end game in mind. In fact, they soon designed a t-shirt for the staff with the same quote. This year, students have put together the red ribbon bags and placed American flags on the lockers around the school. All of our students are working together in some fashion under the direction of Mrs. Zimmerman working to complete our school-wide based project learning <coughs> program. Our staff came together this summer and participated in a BPL book study and a one-day training. The teachers began the groundwork for a very, a very special project. Last week, we all worked together to film a video program, the video for the program honoring our veterans, and she's going to pull the three you for you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. We thank you. Hamilton. They are currently working on their production of Hamilton. 
These are just some of the many ex examples of our leader in the spirit. We've done many things and will continue our efforts working together to improve our school. That being said, I will now turn it over to our principal. I saw that video last night and uh, brought tears to my eyes again, but it's happy tears. Because um, we worked with one of our babies, <laughs> her son, um, and Mike McCormick from the high school. And um, our teachers and our, our kids came up with those ideas to do that. And I'm just so honored and blessed um, that, that that happened. And I, I wanted to share that because um, I just, that to me really summarizes what we want our kids to do and collaborate um, and to have uh, that, that confidence and that pride. Um, so that's why I wanted to share that with you all. Um, but I'm going to talk about the boring stuff, <laughs> which is the data. Um, my leadership team and I, um, for a while, we've been um, social worker, we had a counselor, um, how do we tackle attendance, and my forethought was why can't we attack it like we do with reading or math intervention and do a three-tiered model and then well, you know, there's actually one out there. Um, so our tier one, school-wide, we want everybody here, everybody gets to, you know, raise part of the Responsible Students Program, which also attacks uh, behavior and attendance and the the willing to striving for success and leadership. Um, and chronically absent by definition is what we are saying at, here at Guyton Valley is there's someone that misses at least 18 more day, 18 plus days of school. That means that they're not going to meet that 90% mark and that hurts us. Um, so tier two kids that are beginning um, to be on track to be chronically absent, um, those kids we're working on too. Um, and tier three, these are the chronically absent kids. These kids, um, they're missing those 18 days. So what we're looking at for T1 
Tier two are students as they start to show signs of being absent at three days, our social worker is calling home. We're making uh, home visits. Attendance letters are going out that not what Kevin sends out, we're sending out something of our own to make contact with those parents to say, hey, your, your child's absent. Is there something that we need to do to help you? Is there a way that we can help you? Um, sometimes it's just reaching out and making that contact that makes all the difference. Um, also, our students that are in those chronically absent categories are tracking their attendance. Through Leader and Me, we have leadership portfolios and the students have to sell, um, set wigs, wildly important goals. And one of those wildly important goals for those kids that are chronically absent is for them to be here. So they have to track their attendance and those are documented in their uh, leadership portfolios. And also having attendance meetings and doing attendance contracts, again, goal setting and um, that what we are doing is to help Mr. Pritchard when he gets to that truancy stage as well, to say, hey, we're reaching out and we're doing these things, um, which helps him in his job. Um, um, state assessment, this is um, from Zoom. also from Zoom WBE, and this is just um, an overview of whole school scores. Um, of course, 2015-16, that was, that was a little bit of a different test. 16-17 so, uh, was a fixed format. Everybody got the same computerized test, so those results are it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. Um, but the last two years of data, 17-18 and 18-19, are more of a better compatibility match that we can look at. Um, but I've been able to dive a little bit deeper into the scores, and this comes from our AirSat. I mean, that's kind of hard to read. Um, our sixth grade students from 17-18 and 18-19, um, even though they're different groups of kids, they actually score the same 42% two years in a row, which is probably a, a, a mathematical anomaly. <laughs> um, our sixth grade to seventh grade had a decrease in ELA from nine uh, percent, and seventh eighth to seventh grade to eighth grade had a decrease an ELA decrease of one percent. Um, math sixth grade to seventh grade had an increase of one percent, and seventh grade to eighth grade math had a two percent decrease. Um, it's no um, no reason to hide it, but we have. Part of the problem is when you've got, looking at 88 students on an IEP, that's not to mention the other kids that are identified through SAP or 504s, and that's a third of my school. And when those students don't score out of that does not meet standards category, uh, that makes it really hard for us to have increase and growth. Because, and, and the sad part is those are the kids that need to grow the most. Um, so we're still going to keep implementing um, our learning skills classes where the uh, students can be, we can attack math and language arts. We just have gone through a, um, a, a training with Mundo um, where they are helping us, that's another uh, form of reading intervention where we can actually back up and do some phonics and fluency with our kids because if they don't have the phonics and fluency to read a sentence or a paragraph, then they're not gonna be able to read and comprehend larger text or stretch text or complex text. Um, so we wanna back up and treat that so that we can move them forward because they're always gonna be stuck in first gear if we don't, move, if we don't do some sort of remediation there. Um, same thing with math, like we said, we, our PLCs are working on using the GSA data. Um, I went to a PEAKS training in June, I brought that back with, uh, for the staff, um, where we took apart the test and looked at the standards that we were weakest in, and they can also focus on those standards as well with math and ELA. Um, this is a nice view on Zoom in which this is how the kids scored last year. However, 
Zoom populates the students to our current students, which is great for me because I don't always get to see how our fifth grade is coming in as a sixth grader, how they scored on the test. So this is kind of like, this is that snapshot of if those fifth graders were my sixth graders, this is what our scores look like from the end of last year. Okay. So that gives me a really good picture and my staff a really good picture as far as um, how can we or what do we need to do with our incoming fifth graders as sixth graders. Um, and hopefully then we can take this snapshot at the end of this year and compare it and we'll see growth. And, be, and we'll know that, um, for instance, here if we look at the sixth grade, 41 of those sixth graders scored does not meet standards or in the red. And that 29 scored partial mastery, which is the yellow, and 21 scored meets standards, and only nine were exceed standards in the green. Um, in the seventh grade, we had 32 does not meet standards, 26 partial mastery, and 27 meet standards and 15 exceeds. And in the eighth grade, 30 does not meet 34 partial and 31 meets at meet standards and four that exceeded those standards. So and that's just, just for ELA. Yeah, I, just it, tell me if I'm seeing this wrong, but it seems like because the seventh and eighth grade data are from actual students here that were sixth graders and then seventh graders and now eighth graders. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the bottom's coming up, mm -hmm. but the top's coming down too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, like, it's like a bell curve. Mm -hmm. Everybody's, mm -hmm. I mean, the, I'd like to see more green. I want to see more I do exceeding. Too. I do too. I, mean, I, I do like too. The bottom's coming up and the middle's coming up, but. But you're, you're absolutely right. I totally agree. That's, um, when I look at RI data or reading inventory data or math inventory data, those, especially the reading inventory data, the kids that are exceed standards there, like they're scoring a Lexile of, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, so there's no more, much more wiggle room for them because it goes up, it caps off at 1,700. Mm -hmm. So if those kids backslide, we really got to figure out why do they backslide? Because once they're up there, they should stay there. Well, and I kind of equivalent that with, you know, being in a class, like I taught English for years. So if my kid comes in as a seventh grader and they're exceed <laughs> standards, there's no reason why they're backsliding. Well, they need to keep not, moving forward, staying I, there. I, I wasn't looking at this right. What I'd like to see, and you may have it for me, I may be jumping the gun, but I'd like to see, and, and I know we don't, don't have the test changed two years ago, right? Right. In the only last two years. Next year, what I'd like to see is what the 17, 18, mm -hmm. sixth grade class, or I guess it would be the, you know, 16, See that group all the way through. Yeah, follow them all the way through. Yeah. I think that that's a much because you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is a great view to say, hey, this is where our school has actually started. And I really, the one thing that my teachers and I all agreed on was the fact that we really missed doing those CBAs this year because we had so much valuable data that we could mine. Um, so, but this gives us a view without having to do the test, mm -hmm. even though it was based on last year's test. So. Kind of gives us a little bit of something, but we don't have like those standards that those kids were tested on and hadn't even seen. Um, but again, like I can show you math as well. And I don't know why eighth grade grew in the red. Um, that, but that was our weakest class coming in as sixth graders. That was the group because that's our current eighth grade. That was the group when they came as sixth graders, 6% six were proficient. Um, so that's a killer. When you have a group of about, I don't know, 90, you know, let's say 90 to 100 kids and only 6% are proficient, there's a problem. You know, what do we do? We, you, you kind of back up and you remediate as much as you can, but that test comes around a little, little faster than what they're ready for. So. Um, but that's, again, that's the same thing with math. We can look at those numbers, and um, by the end of the, this year, when we take the test again in the spring, we'd like to see more blue and green. Is what we really 
point to see. Less red. Um, but we're doing something right because we're keeping our heads above water. We weren't labeled a comprehensive school. Um, and we have, for us, if you're looking at 30% special ed, and that does not count your 504s and your SATs, we're doing something right. So we just got to keep on that path and keep pushing and plowing. Um, as far as facility needs, really and truly, uh, my, my staff, my students, my parents, my community members, thank all of you for you know, making that push to allocate funds to make that happen. Um, we truly, truly do feel blessed. Um, we know that we've got some work ahead in there. We want to do wall-to-wall -wall mats on both sides of the gym. We want to do the hydraulic baskets. We're, um, we've got team chairs um, coming. Uh, nobody has to walk on the floor now or walk between the team and the floor. Um, so that makes, and it just is such a, a morale booster for the kids. Those team chairs, you told me about them, are those the ones that are linked or just individual chairs? Individual. Will there be something under them before you sit them down on that new We're going to get a nice little, we're going to get nice rug runners. Okay. So you have the chair and then there will be enough room for the kids to sit with their feet and they can just get okay. on the floor and they don't have to worry about getting dirty or anything like that. But um, <coughs> yeah, we're just so excited about that. It's a process. Um, it's a little slower than what I thought. Yeah, but I bet of all the projects you have to undertake, all the things you have to worry about, when you're trying to get everything done over there, that's not quite as big a bother as some of the other things you have to deal with, right? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We had a, we just, there were just, you are aware of the issues that had propped up, come up with the, with the floor, the home, right. and, and, that, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, that, yeah, sometimes it's a struggle, but we, we may do, you know, we we were blessed, we were, I, I say that we're blessed because I really feel like we're, we're graced by God, and, um, you know, I have a great, awesome, super positive PE teacher that, you know, we have not really been able to get in there until the last month since spring break of last year. You know, we've done alternate PE outside, we've done some in here, we've incorporated, um, you know, kids researching like different games and stuff so they can be culturally aware of different types of games that are out there and, you know, give them some of those experiences that they normally wouldn't get. And, um, you know, it's been a learning curve, but, you know, we did it. Um, I don't know how other schools will do it, but we did it. <laughs> um, the center logo, um, that was designed by one of our babies, um, Colton Daughtery. Um, and that came on a whim, and it was actually the day they went to lay down the stencil for the design that the floor company came up with. It was like, stop, hold the presses, we got something else. And um, that came together beautifully. Um, I think that is such an honor to have one of our former students, you know, who came through here when it was officially a middle school, um, to design that for us and, and work with us on that. Um, you know, like I said, we're going to do the, the other things. And it's still a work in progress, but we've got um, a lot of people that want to help us. They want to paint locker rooms and bathrooms and lobbies. And I'm saying, go for it because, you know, it, you've got this beautiful space inside. I think the rest of it is time to, we'll have to get it to match. Uh, facility other needs, if you notice out here, we have really no lighting coming up this front walk. And that parking lot area, it's really dark. And now that we have those nice trees, when you come out of the building and you look out, you really don't have a good lot of sight. So it's, it's hard to see, especially even in the mornings coming in. Um, one of the other things we would like to ask for is another dumpster. We used to have two dumpsters, and then we've changed companies. And the, there was an old auxiliary building, and that got tore down. That dumpster went bye-byes and never returned. And when we have game nights, it's really hard between uh, breakfast, lunch, games to make sure everything fits in that dumpster for two to three days. So our trash runs Tuesdays and Thursdays. If we've got a tournament Friday night and, and it runs Saturday and buddy ball on the weekends, come, come Monday, we're stacking our trash outside the dumpster. So. Um, that's something that we'd like to look at getting another dumpster if we could. Um, field goal post, that's something that we need painted. We'd like to see maybe an outdoor bathroom for athletic events. Um, it's kind of 
hard for Brandy and I to be everywhere at once during a game. And we've been closing off the, the gym and just leaving that lobby open, but it's, that's hard to monitor when you're outside and inside. Um, uh, and then the other projects, basically just painting the cafeteria. Our basement hallway needs painted. And I know that that was unused space for a long time, and we're really starting to try to take that back over and use that, utilize that for our kids. Um, and I think it's important that if it's part of our building, why doesn't it not look good? And that's what we've been working towards. Um, let's try to make it look good. And Armstrong the year before really helped us in this library get this building. And um, as my child said, you know, GB keeps the end game in mind. So some things that are coming up that we're looking forward to are um, we've got a grandparent celebration luncheon coming back. Um, I've got a great, awesome, fabulous, I can't say enough positive about her, community coordinator, Connie Webb. Um, and she really, she's a real go-getter, and I just I appreciate her. The staff appreciates her, and she really helps us get things going. Um, we have a social worker, too, that will be helping um, actually take more charge on the grandparents' luncheon. But we also have a Title I family night coming up. Um, we're going to do Literacy and Numeracy S'mores night. We're going to have our little campfire out here, roast some s'mores, and have hot chocolate do math, do reading, along with our book fair. And we're going to tie that in with um, some basketball games. Um, that's something we did last year, and it was a huge success for us. We had almost 60 people come out for a title one night, which sometimes we only get three or four. Um, and we tied that into a ball game, and that was fabulous, because the coaches were like, hey, go get, go get you a book, go get you some hot chocolate, throw some s'mores, go calculate volume. And um, so we're looking forward to doing that again. We're also going to do a Leader Me book study with families. Um, Mr. Davis and I got together and we talked about um, some Leader Me materials. And one of the things that we found was we could do a book study with families. So we're going to offer two different sessions. We're going to offer a session during the day in which parents could come in and do a book study during the day with our community uh, contact. And then we're going to do an evening session for parents who might work or uh, the day may inconvenience them to be here. And we try to offer it. And if we get, we figure if we can offer things in different avenues for parents, we might have more participation and more engagement. And that's also connected to our uh, community and schools initiative as well. Um, we're also going to put on a production of Hamilton. Our students have um, led that, um, which was awesome because. I really thought at first it was a challenge to see if the kids would even step up. Um, and Mr. Altizer told them that one of the first things they had to do was they had to edit the song lyrics, they have to do the choreography, they have to, you know, just figure it out. And he would devote his time to them. And so far they've done everything he's asked, they've done, and he's devoted his time. So I'm really excited to see this. Um, and then the last thing that we're really looking forward to in the spring is continuing with our this will be our third annual teen summit, which is a conference for students. It's totally driven by what the students want. So what we've done is we send out surveys to the kids to find out what kinds of topics or social topics are they interested in. Then we find speakers um, and experts in that field to come in. If it's human trafficking, if it's um, healthy eating, um, just a whole entourage of different topics that they would want. And then those students, once we have those topics lined out, what we're going to be able to have speakers come to, we allow those students to select up to three, and then we give them a schedule for the afternoon. So we do a general assembly like you would when you would go to a professional conference, and then the afternoon they follow that schedule. And the kids absolutely love it. The um, speakers that come in, that they absolutely love it. And um, I think us teachers, we love it too because it's such a different way of learning. And our kids always say, can we do that again? Um, so this year, Ms. Zimmerman also, for um, as part of our Celebrate Freedom Week, we did a thing with our 9-11, for 9-11, our first responders coming out. And it wasn't just, 
oh, here's a fire truck or here's a cop car, but here's the equipment we're going to use if there's ever an emergency. And let's show you how to use it. Let them try on the equipment, let them sit in the driver's seat and show them what some of these buttons actually do. And um, our kids had a fabulous time with that. They really learned a lot. And that was another thing that they came back to say, can we do that again? Can we have another learning day like that? So I think the more times that we can put those real, real world um, opportunities in our hands, that's something we definitely want to keep on doing. And I just want to thank you um, for your time. We appreciate you. And we just want to keep working together, making this happen. Okay. Does anybody have anything in particular? Uh, you did a very uh, thorough presentation there. You covered everything. Once again, uh, uh, the you know, appearances here, what we see are a lot of positive things going on in the facility itself. To, the activities that you have going on. There are a lot of unique things there, so we can mention for that. Um, but uh, as always, uh, you've got to keep working, and you all will do. <laughs> and we'll try to do all we can to help. Okay? Well, we appreciate it. Thank all you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, take about a 10-minute break, if we could, please. So we'll resume in about 10 minutes.